right? What happens if the if the master goes down? So um, if if I look at it in a conceptual way, like the, if it's the, the control plane, so instead of imagining that these rectangles here are like a, a, a server or a process, let's imagine it, it's a service. So it's assured by a, a bunch of things together. If the control plane goes down, then my cluster is a little bit like a headless chicken. So everything continues to run. Everything is fine, except I can't adjust things anymore. I can't start a new container. The auto scaling stops working. The failover stops working. Um, it's a little bit as if I had lost SSH access to my machine to, to, to simplify a little bit. So if my control plane goes down, um, it's, it's not critical as long as it's just for a few minutes. But if it lasts longer, then eventually I am going to have big problems. So since I don't want my control plane to go down, I need all these services up there to be highly available. How do we make that happen? In the case of etcd, good news, etcd was designed exactly for that purpose. Uh, etcd is a highly available key value data store. So it, uh, contrarily to many other data stores, it doesn't put emphasis on speed. Um, but it puts emphasis on being always available no matter what. So instead of being like a primary secondary setup where when the primary goes down, well, I, I have a, this kind of a transition period while I promote the replica, etc. but eventually I, I can run again. In the case of etcd, if I have a three nodes etcd cluster, I can, I can lose a, a node at any time and the other nodes continue to work uh, without me having to do anything. Um, as long as I have a majority of nodes uh, still available, I'm good. So if I have three nodes, that means I can lose one. If I have five nodes, I can lose two nodes. Uh, if I have seven nodes, I could lose three, etc., etc. Sometimes some people ask, hey, why don't I just put like 100 nodes in my etcd cluster? Because not only etcd doesn't have an emphasis on speed, but in fact, the more nodes you add, the slower it gets. Because each time we write something to its CD, we need to write it to everyone. So if I just have five nodes, basically when I write something, I just need to write it to five nodes and I'm good. If I have 100 nodes or 1,000 nodes, now I need to write that to 100 machines or 1,000 machines, and that's when it gets slower and slower and slower. Okay, so for its CD, good news, it, it manages high availability on its own, so it's not going to be too hard to... Uh, to run it uh, in a highly available way. What about the three others? The three others are stateless. Uh, so we, we could have two approaches. One approach would be, well, if they go down, not a big deal. I'm just going to restart a new instance. Um, and they also support um, replication. So for API server, I, I could have multiple API servers and I can talk to any of them and it just works since it's stateless. Um, as for controller manager and scheduler, they are using um, active standby scenario where if I have multiple controller managers, one of them will um, acquire a kind of uh, a lease, a lock, and it's going to be active and, and process requests, and the other one will remain in standby so that if the first one falls down, they, will, they just take over. And that's the same thing for the scheduler. So that's how we achieve high availability on the control plane. Sorry, let me rephrase. This is one way to achieve high availability on the control plane by making sure that each component individually is highly available. Another way to ensure high availability, in particular for people who have modest deployments on, let's say, VMware or something like that, and who already have some technology like vMotion or something equivalent that lets them have high availability on a VM level, then the strategy can be, you know what, I'm not going to have replication there. I'm just going to cram all these services in one VM. And if that VM goes down, I'm just going to use vMotion or whatever to restart it on another hypervisor. And that's perfectly fine um, as long as it can be done quickly. And quickly is, is like, if it's done in a matter of minutes, then it's perfectly fine. In fact, if, if we go and look at the SLAs of... Um, for instance, GKE, the Google Kubernetes Engine, so the managed Kubernetes offering of Google. If we look at the SLAs, they, they will, I, I don't have them on top of my head, but if we look at them, they, they will look pretty bad. But if we put things in perspective, it doesn't mean that the cluster is going to be down. 
it means that the control plane is going to perhaps be down once in a while, but it will never be long enough for that to be a problem for us. We will, most likely we will never notice.